Bonsoir. À cette bonsoir. This is how we say good evening in French. Sorry to keep you waiting. You waited at least four years for this to happen. You could wait 15 minutes more. Um, so my name is Jean-Baptiste Clevé. Together with Marion Sandral, we've been heading the, the local committee organizing the, this conference. The least we could say is that we're happy that it, a type I is coming back. Uh, and in Paris, nonetheless, nevertheless. Um, the story of this uh, conference happening is uh, a very long story. I have fond memories of saying goodbye, see you next year in 2019 <laughs> in Tokyo. Um, well, in the meantime, many things happen. Um, this, uh, the idea of having this conference organized in Paris, as you now know, survived four Taipei presidencies, <laughs> a global pandemic, um, three French presidents, uh, an incredible amount of strikes. So, needless to say that this conference happening is also a story of persistence and dedication. Um, this is why I'm seizing the opportunity also to thank the people uh, the, the men and women who helped organize this, uh, this conference. This is definitely a team effort. So whenever you have a chance to meet the volunteers, to meet the staff, take a moment to greet them and thank you for their hard work. <laughs> We're having this conference in Paris at a very interesting time, both for the French type design community and type design in general. Never have there been as many schools, foundries, type designers, practitioners, writers than, than there ever is about type. Um, are we living, are we approaching a gold, new golden age of French type design? Well, the chauvinistic in me would say yes, <laughs> of course. This is definitely a great time to be in Paris, not just for this conference, but also to enjoy the, not just this massively intense program we've prepared for you, but also everybody, everything else that the city has to offer. Be, beside that program, we also have a very rich and dense off program with openings, vernissage, exhibitions, visits, um, make sure you hop on the Etaipai website to see what, what everything that the city has to offer. And it's not just fine wines, beautiful flourish trees, and, and beautiful architecture. Um, my first Etaipai was in 2006. I guess, I hope everybody was born in 2006. <laughs> Uh, the last Etaipai in Paris was 1989. Um, and this evening, I, I, would have to, I would like to have a word for people who did not, whose first Etaipai it is, who are here for the first time. Um, when I arrived, I was a bit overwhelmed and shy by all the names and people that I only know in writing. This week is... Um, it's a great opportunity for you to connect with new friends, um, join, see old ones, and um, grow your network, learn a few things on the way. If this is your first Taipei, please connect, please say hi. And if this is not your first Taipei, you have a duty to connect with people you don't know, because this is what this community is about. It's about making links, making connections, and not just learning a few things on the way, attending a few conferences. Um, I always have memories, it never misses, each time I attend a, a Taipei conference, of how pumped I get back home, about how highly motivated I get back home. 
I have energy, willingness, motivation to start new undertakings, new adventures regarding type. This is definitely what I wish we'll find this week for you. I'm so happy that you are all here. I'm so happy that we're all back together here in uh, our home city. Uh, welcome to Paris. Bienvenue à Paris. Have a great week. Enjoy. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I'll say the same words that we're so proud to be back to Paris. Even though I've never been to those previous conferences, like way back, um, my one was in 2009, the first one in Mexico. And uh, I've been to so many different type of conferences in, in the past. And I think the ITAPI is always stand out for the community, like especially the, the chats that we have uh, between talks, coffee breaks, dinner parties, and, and the whole package. So I think it's, uh, it's really important that, especially at this moment, they're trying to reconnect in person. So it's funny that people that you know for a long time, but you haven't seen for five years or so, and then it's almost like introducing yourself again, say like who you are. Uh, oh yeah, I know who you are, but I haven't seen you for such, such a long time. So I think it's, uh, Paris is special in that sense, uh, for uh, everything started with ATAPA in Paris. So we have Charles Pignon, the uh, very first president in 1959, and then Paris hosted the most uh, uh, times ATAPI conferences by five times before this one, so now we can check the box six times now already, we can count the first day. And I think that, so it's really important to be back here as almost like a restart, like, a, like resetting the whole thing by every, every three, four years not having conferences, so I think that's the right place to do, like to reconnect and, or as uh, Jean-Baptiste said as well, to connect and get to know more people. I was thinking even the students that we usually, uh, the students that say, they, let's say five past years, they never attend any conferences. So it's probably the first time they're actually been to a conference. And I've been talking even to some of the monitors, I say, yeah, we're being the first year students, and I think it's so great to, to see them involved already and being part of such event. So yeah, so I think really pleased to be here with uh, and get all to see new faces, familiar faces as well, like with the mix of always get to know new people and, and see so, so many familiar faces. Uh, I'd like to do also a shout out to like my own personal angle as well, like being, uh, it's for me it's such a privilege to be here with even like classmates from, let's say my, my classmates from Reading in 2008. And then seeing like Evan Sorkin, for instance, is going to be talking tomorrow. Uh, uh, you can see uh, Dave Crossland, for instance, he was also a classmate. And I uh, get to see him talking all, all year long about LibreFonts uh, back in 2009. And I said, look, oh, I don't know if that's going to work and now see what's going on. So, so I think it's really good to see uh, the sense of community and also the Brazilian gang. There's so many out there. So uh, there have been maybe more than 10 usually attend the conference. I'm Brazilian myself. And uh, so I think it's really good to see this ongoing community as well. So uh, have I said that? Uh, the last thing would be that uh, also during the pandemic as well, uh, especially now I've been on the board uh, for the last six years and uh, the last year working, uh, acting as the pre uh, president of ATPI. I was even trying to think myself, how did you manage to survive actually during the pandemic? Like everybody, of course, their own personal lives trying to, to make it happen. And as a nonprofit association, because you can see so many associations that have a lot of money to support uh, the existence, and we don't have much. And then I was thinking to myself, how, how did you make it? And at the end, I think we, when it goes back, it's actually the connections that we make and the people that are behind it. So I think it's a pie that's, for me, is like the most important thing, is the people, without it, it doesn't even exist, the association. So I think that's why we are here uh, again. And then again, so that, why it's so good to see so many new faces and familiar faces again. So to, to finish also then the, just like a, it was overwhelming uh, submission, uh, like, like we got more than 250 submissions for talks in Paris, which way more, 300, yes, it's kind of, yes. It was so hard actually to, to make a way to accommodate most of the talks. We left so many good talks out. So if you are among them, uh, we are sorry for that. So we hope you apply again for next year, but we, the way to actually compensate that, we have almost twice as the speakers that you usually have. So that's a, a way that we thought, because of course I know you've been holding for three, four years to submit your proposal, and then it's kind of, it was really a struggle for us to, to actually to, to see what we would put 
together, and especially giving voices, new voices. I think that's one of the things about ATEPI as well, to get, of course, the familiar faces, but trying to bring new people on board. So really happy as well to, to try to do this work on backstage, trying to accommodate uh, so everybody, like new faces and, and the other ones as well. So that's it for me. Uh, I would just like on all, also as well now to welcome on stage uh, Phil Garnham, uh, the executive creative director of Monotype. And Phil, where are, the, where are you, Phil? All right. So Phil, the same thing, Connections, 2014, Barcelona. I think the first time we met. So different, I was working in different companies. He was working in a different company. So it's really good to, to catch up. And so, yeah, Phil, welcome. <laughs> Hello, hello. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, yeah, as, as, as was said, I'm, I'm Phil. I know some of you, I don't know all of you, but um, yeah, I'm Executive Creative Director at Monotype and formerly at Fontsmith as well. And at Monotype, I work with Charles Nix in New York and uh, Tom Foley, who's based in London with me. So, isn't it fantastic to be here? It's so good to like, be here in person. It feels like we have come out of some kind of black hole of pandemic nature and just here we are <laughs> it's, it's great um i mean i'm just so excited to hear about kind of what's going on in our industry everything that's happening inside what where is this all going you know it's this is a very exciting space to be in um i think a type i for me is really about a little bit like yoga um henning told me this earlier on but i think Actually, it is, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a chance to just kind of breathe, surround ourselves with good people, meditate, rejuvenate on the thing that we love. And, um, yeah, I, I just love it. So type is so important. Um, and, of course, at Monotype, you know, the pace and change of this industry is just wild. Um, we're exploring all kinds of things. We're experimenting um, and partnering with a company called Neurons to try and understand kind of types, sort of connection with emotion. Um, we're exploring AI. I'm not going to get into that too much, but like more in the, in the sense of kind of enabling search and better discovery for designers. And also we have the Monotypes Fonts platform, which hopefully you can spend some time with in our little lounge space outside in the next few days. So I guess there's not much more to say. I mean, please do come and say hi. Um, say hello to anyone in the team. Um, we'd love to talk. You know, this whole event is about talking, getting that typographic conversation going. And, you know, it's an honor to partner and sponsor Atypi again after all these years. And, you know, Atypi, you know, is a brilliant community. Um, it's a very special thing. And, you know, I'm just really excited that we're all together. So I just want to thank the Atypi team as well for making this happen. Fantastic work. Um, so let's have a great conference and hopefully speak soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, so again, Phil, thanks so much. And I think especially you want to thank uh, uh, Monotype as well for sponsoring uh, the events as well, especially this night. So everything for this night uh, was sponsored by Monotype. And, uh, and also the other thing that I didn't mention is that we... Another way to support the community over the last couple of years it was through scholarship tickets, because we know I, as being by like attending conferences from Brazil all the time, I always know what it is to make an investment to travel to attend. So we've always been like trying to find new ways to support people that have that either either in financial hardship or especially during COVID, it kind of was a worldwide situation. So it's something that we try to do through scholarship tickets. So it's pretty much to giving free tickets for people that would love to attend but doesn't have to mean, the means to do it at the moment. So then, of course, also we count with sponsors like Monotype the same way to support uh, scholarship tickets. So yeah, I really, really thank them for, for that because uh, that's a way as well to get people that, uh, not only the people that can have the funds to travel and then actually trying to do something as well to give it back to the community. So it's something that we did with the online events as well during the pandemic. And now we're extending that to the to this conference. So I think it was more than 50 tickets for this conference so far that we gave it away for free for, for people that requested. And it was to totally anonymous deal in the sense of uh, we didn't dis disclose who, who was asking apart from the committee that was working on that. So really pleased by that. So now let's go for the fun part as well, right? 
you see those guys here probably thinking what is going on. So the, one, the ones already read the booklet, so have a slightly idea about what is going on. For the ones that don't, you are about to find out, and maybe you can even talk a little bit more about that at the end, but it's like a VR calligraphy performance. Uh, supported by the, Pol the Polish Japanese Academy, uh, this, this session. And we have Monica and Brody, stage is yours.